Hey guys, my name is Shreyas and welcome to Simple Biology. Today we're going to be looking at hybrid zones. A hybrid zone is a region where two distinct populations or species found in close proximity to each other reproduce uh, and uh, start to form this mixed ancestry. So we have a diagram here, there would be population X, population Y, um, and they're very close to each other and they start reproducing and they create this interesting zone called a hybrid zone. Um, and they tend to form when two species lack reproductive barriers and they come in contact with each other. Now remember these are two different species, it's not like um, one chimpanzee mating with another chimpanzee in another population. It's two separate species with which have gen different genetic um, genetic material. Um, the hybrid zone itself can be any um, length or width. And the interesting thing with the hybrid zones is that a species frequency, uh, allele frequency, decreases as they get closer to the hybrid zone. So if you look here, let's say this was um, a red, in population X it would be, let's say, a red frog, and then here, or let's just go with the colors here. So here you have a yellow frog and then we have an orange frog. So what happens actually is that as you go closer and closer to the hybrid zone, the um, the frequency of that uh, color or that allele will um, steadily come down. Okay, from here, from here to here. Okay, it won't be like this. It won't be like yellow in this suddenly red and then suddenly orange. It'll it'll be like a gradual decrease in color. And the reason for that is because uh, usually these hybrids are not viable. They don't. Um, exist as well as the other two populations. So instead of creating a hybrid zone and repopulating and creating these three distinct uh, species with yellow, red, and orange, you're going to see that steady flow from yellow to maybe a yellowish red to red to a reddish orange to orange. Now, when we talk about hybrid zones, there's three things that can happen whenever a hybrid zone is formed. Reinforcement of barriers, fusion of species and stability. So let's go ahead and focus on reinforcement of barriers first. So reinforcement is when you when there's a strengthening of reproductive barriers. So that means let's say you have uh, again back to this example here the yellow and the orange uh, animals coming together to create the hybrid zone. Reinforcement would mean that eventually with time uh, the hybrid zone would cease to exist and these reproductive barriers will come back and uh, this hybrid zone will just kind of disappear. And it occurs usually when a hybrid is weaker than its parent species. Okay, so when the it's usually better, this happens whenever natural selection is going to select the parent species over the hybrid species. So because of that, the hybrid species are not going to be able to exist. Natural selection is just going to take over and just separate the parent species again and hybrid species will uh, just be left out. Uh, and this type of uh, reinforcement, this typically happens in sympatric populations rather than allopatric um, populations. So sympatric populations, remember those are uh, populations which are separated not by location by something else, and allopatric populations are the ones that are separated by location. So this is more likely to happen in sympatric populations. The second type of uh, thing that can happen to hybrid spe hybrid zones is fusion of species. So this happens when um, you see a weakening of reproductive barriers and occurs when the gene pools of two different species become increasingly alike. So what happens is like the two species here that we saw here will start to fuse together just to create one species and the hybrid will um, become the only species that exists. You can kind of think of it as reverse speciation. You have, you're starting to combine species together. And this typically happens when the hybrid species is better suited for the environment than the parent species. So then natural selection is going to select for the hybrid species and they're going to start to reproduce and um, kill out the parent species. Now, the last type of, uh, last thing that could possibly happen is stability. Stability is the constant and stable formation of hybrids. It occurs when the hybrids survive and reproduce better than their parent species. Just the same, uh, it's it's like a less, a less extreme version of this. Fusion species means the hybrids completely um, take out the parent species, uh, but stability is when you um, all three species can kind of like survive on their own. 
so you, then you'll just see this constant um, hybrid being formed in the middle, and then you have the two parent species also surviving, and now you have three um, species. Now Darwin asked two basic questions when he, he talked about speciation. The first is how long does it take for a species, a new species, to form, and how many genes change when a spe single species splits into two species? So Darwin, in order to uh, find out this information, Darwin gathered two pieces of evidence to measure the speciation over time, uh, the pattern of fossil records and data showing the intervals between speci speciation events of a particular group of organisms. Scientists have observed inside of fossils, uh, species inside of fossils that stayed for millions of years without ch uh, millions of years without change and then soon disappeared. So like the species just remained constant millions of years and suddenly they just disappeared. And then they came up with the theory of a punctuated equilibria, which basically says that when a species undergoes, it's basically when a species undergoes little to no morphological change in the layers of fossils, it can result in extinction over time and it shows how rapid speciation occurs. So basically it's like you have this equilibrium, this, this long period of time uh, of one species, and then you suddenly, suddenly very quickly have speciation event or an extinction event. It's not like species are slowly um, created over time. It's more of just having these short speciation events, um, which are very distinct from just no morphologic, uh, morphological change. Okay, now let's review how the speciation process occurs. We talked about this in depth on the previous video, but this is just a review, uh, a recap. Speciation starts after gene flow between populations is interrupted. You have no idea what gene flow is, you need to go out um, and check out previous videos. Gene flow, so this basically means that there is no more um, flow of genes between two populations. So you suddenly see this cutoff of gene flow. And speciation can be interpreted by uh, environmental changes or natural events like storms, hurricanes, and floods. So once the gene flow is interrupted, uh, populations start to become reproductively isolated, and that's how new species are formed. Now, to answer Darwin's second question, which was how many genes need to be changed in order to a single species to be uh, changed into two different species, uh, it actually depends. Sometimes speciation can be affected by a single gene, you know, just one gene changes and you have a different species. Uh, a few amount of genes can be uh, form a reproductive bar barrier. If an organism has too much or less genes, it can influence the evol um, evolution of reproductive isolation. Um, so, you know, it doesn't matter. Sometimes it's just one gene, sometimes it's many, many genes have to change in order for the uh, species, new species to be created. It all just depends on um, what those genes are. Uh, and then, of course, reproductive isolation can result in the emergence of a new species, which we already understand. But that's it for now. Hybrid zones are as simple as that.